I told you that the wall hit her back or that the ball hit her foot? Newton's third law says if an object exerts a force on another object, that second object will exert a force of equal strength but in the opposite direction on the first object. For example, the space shuttle, the action force is the space shuttle pushing down on the gases that it produces. The reaction force is the gases pushing back up on the space shuttle. They're equal in size and opposite in direction, and that causes the space shuttle to go up and the gases to be forced down. Another way that we can explain the third law is in much simpler terms. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. You can never have a single force alone without its action-reaction partner. So when I throw a ball, like in this diagram, the action force is my pushing on the ball, but the reaction force is the ball pushing on my hand. It doesn't matter which force you call the action and which force you call the reaction. The forces do not cancel because we can only cancel forces acting on the same object. For example, I'm pushing on the ball and the ball's pushing on my hand, but in no situation are we pushing on the same thing. I told you to recall something back when we were talking about net force, and I said, if I'm pushing on the desk, and you're pushing on the opposite side of the desk, we're both pushing on the desk and our forces can cancel out, making the desk not move if we both pushed with the same magnitude of force. Let's say 10 newtons and 10 newtons. In the third law, you can't cancel out the forces because you're not acting on the same object. One force acts on the ball and the other force acts on the hand. When you're sorting out action and reaction forces, it's always helpful to examine or draw diagrams. For example, if you had a skateboarder, when you push on the ground, that's your action force. But the ground's going to be pushing back on you. That's the reaction force. In this funny situation, the action force would be the elephant pushing on Newton. The reaction force would be Newton pushing on the elephant. Now, here's the thing. If you, can, if you analyze the second law, we're going to have more acceleration with Newton and less acceleration with the elephant. The reason why has to do with the masses. If your F is the same, the reaction and action force are equal, then we're just dealing with the mass and acceleration. Because Newton is a smaller mass compared to the elephant, we know that smaller masses have greater accelerations. It's inversely related, as opposed to the elephant, who has a greater mass and is going to have a less acceleration. This is if you keep your forces equal. Even though that she's hitting the ball with an upward force and the ball's hitting her stick back down with a downward force, you really only see the acceleration of the ball. And that's because the ball has a smaller mass compared to the stick. You won't see the acceleration of the stick. Even though equal and opposite forces are happening, the soccer ball has a smaller mass. Therefore, you're going to see a greater acceleration. In this situation, the gymnast is pushing on the earth and the earth is pushing back on the gymnast. But you're going to see different accelerations. You're not going to see the earth push backward from the gymnast's push because it's too massive. But you will see the gymnast move because the earth is pushing the gymnast and the gymnast is a smaller mass. Imagine a compact car and a large truck traveling with the same velocity. The drivers of both vehicles put on the brakes at the same time. Which vehicle will stop first? You probably would say that the compact car will stop first because you know about Newton's laws. You know that smaller objects are easier to stop than larger objects. But why? The answer is momentum. Momentum is going to deal with an object's inertia. The higher the velocity and mass, so for instance, a large truck, the more momentum the object's going to have. Momentum means movement. Momentum's formula is mass times the velocity. So mass is measured in kilograms and velocity is measured in meters per second. Momentum's often represented with the letter, letter P. Mass already has the M, so we need a different letter, and so they assigned it a P. So you have P equals mass, which is a lowercase m, times your velocity. 
and your units again are kilograms times meters per second. Now, there's a law of conservation of momentum, and it states that the total momentum of any group of objects, so in, in our example that we just said, the car and the truck, the total momentum will remain the same unless outside forces act on the objects. So, so for example, if you have two objects that are colliding and you don't have a lot of friction in the absence of friction, momentum will not be lost. You see this a lot in the game of pool. You can transfer the momentum from your cue ball to a ball that's standing still. And you know that the momentum is transferred because the ball that was once standing still is moving. And the ball that was moving has stopped. That would be total transfer of momentum. Here's another situation with the car and a truck. What I want you to focus on at the beginning is the car's mass of 1,000 and the truck's mass of 3,000. Notice that that never changes even when they hit. And then I want you to watch at the beginning the car's velocity. It was at 20 meters per second and the truck was not moving at all. And now you notice that the car's velocity is less. The car goes from 20 meters per second to 5 meters per second and the truck goes from zero meters per second to five meters per second. So it's, it's received some of that uh, velocity from the car. Now you probably tell yourself, think to yourself, the car started with 20, the truck had zero, now the car has five and the truck has five. Where did the velocity go? Well, we gotta look more into this. The momentum you see at the beginning, if you look at the truck side, the momentum zero for the truck, and then it changes to 15,000. So it's zero at the beginning. The car is 20,000 kilograms times meters per second, which is mass times velocity for momentum. The car had 20,000 to begin with, and now it dropped down to five. What's happening in this situation is that the car and the truck are coupling together what actually happens in real life is, is the metal gets twisted. Maybe the bumpers link up. Somehow they will travel together down the road. They get in an accident and they're going to travel together down the road. Now you can imagine as they're coupled together, they're now a more massive object because now they're combined. And we know in Newton's law number two, the more massive an object is, the less acceleration you will have and if the acceleration is less then potentially the velocity is less as well and that's going to compensate for our loss in velocity where our car started at 20 our truck started at zero and now they're both moving at five meters per second individually 10 meters per second total now let's go back and remember the momentum formula p equals m times v well, if we have m times v for the car at the beginning, we have 1,000 times 20, which gives us a total momentum of 20,000. Check it out right now. The truck, if you look at the beginning, let's look at the beginning for the truck, 3,000 for the mass, zero for the velocity. Therefore, your momentum will be zero at the beginning. So your total momentum at the beginning is 20,000 kilograms times meters per second. And I found that out because if you look at the beginning, the car right about now, 20,000 is the momentum of the car. Zero is for the truck. The total momentum of this, you know, picture right now is 20,000 kilograms times meters per second. The law of conservation of momentum says that you cannot lose momentum. You're just going to transfer it. So if the car is going to give some of the momentum to the truck, then you're going to notice at the end, the two momentums will equal the original total momentum. The original was 20,000. The end is the car ends up with five and the truck ends up with 15,000. If you combine 15,000 and 5,000, you get 20,000. And that's where your total momentum is. That's how much was at the beginning. You've conserved all your momentum. So once again, this situation is called coupling. There are a couple other situations that we're going to talk about in class. This first one is where you have an object not moving 
and you got the blue train hitting it and transferring all of its momentum and you notice that in the after picture the green car now has all the velocity it it transferred all the momentum that's one scenario um, in addition to the coupling scenario this other um, diagram is showing how you can just transfer some of the momentum and um, you start off with a lot of velocity and the other one has a little bit of a velocity when you hit the first one has a little bit of velocity and the second one has more so this is um, transferring momentum when they're both kind of moving so these are kind of some um, additional scenarios that we're going to discuss in class mm -hmm.